I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the city of Winchester which is located about 14 miles north of Southampton but we're actually on the eastern side of the city on the western side of the South Downs National Park and today we're going to be doing a roughly five mile circular route climbing up St Catherine's Hill for some great views as well as checking out a Miz maze then back down along the Itchin navigation going along a, a magnificent viaduct back along the banks of the river Itchin and past the hospital of St Cross so there's lots to see now I'm filming at the beginning of August the weather well the sun is there but it's quite cloudy today so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's not going to be too dark for the GoPro camera but it's a nice temperature perfect for walking so do come along with us well I've parked my car at a free car park at Garnier Road which is uh, at the foot of the hill I'm just by the Itchin navigation and that's Tun Bridge over there but uh, We'll be talking a little bit more about the navigation later. I said we're at the foot of the hill, so we need to start the walk uphill. Well, just before we start our ascent, just to get our bearings, the car park is just through there. We've just come underneath an arch of an old railway bridge, more of the old railway later. And there's a, a little cafe there, which is uh, where we'll be going for our final destination. Now right by me here there's a little information board it tells us that we're in St Catherine's Hill Nature Reserve and the actual hill although it's owned by uh, Winchester College it's actually uh, looked after by the uh, Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust okay there's a handy little map here and show uh, where we're going to be going so that's where we are now and we're going to make our way up to the top of the hill have a look around here uh, probably go along this side here and then down these steps along this path here and then we'll be heading that way and then round actually I think it goes this way there's a sort of path that goes through all the way around here and then down there and then back <laughs> so should be a good walk Halfway up, good excuse to stop and have a look at the view to the uh, west. And it really is quite stunning. And so it is a little bit hazy today, but uh, isn't that beautiful? So looking over there, let's see. Uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit more about that church later on because we'll be passing it later. And then uh, some water meadows, the river Itchin down there. And this is obviously looking over the city of Winchester. Just waking up. And there is uh, Winchester Cathedral in all its glory. It uh, really is quite magnificent. Originally built in 1079 and I think it remains the longest Gothic cathedral in Europe and then again down there you can see the itching navigation and that's the path that we've just come up right now we've got our breath back we can carry on upwards well we've nearly made it to the top this is the only uphill bit it's downhill from now on now at the top of the hill is uh, an Iron Age hill fort it's about nine hectares and oval shaped and you can still easily make out a lot of the, the defences today. There's a, a, a rampart of about seven and a half metres high all the way round 
flanked by a, a two metre ditch and a, a low counter scarp bank. And there may well have been an unfortified settlement here originally between 550 and 500 BC, but the defences were constructed between 250 and 200 BC. But uh, it was no longer occupied by the uh, first century. Let's go and do a little bit more exploring. By the way, you might hear a bit of a drone from a road. That's the wonderful M3 that's not too far from here. Well, right at the top of the hill is a clump of trees known locally as the clump that was uh, planted in the mid 18th century, just behind me here. And the clump actually covers the site of a 12th century chapel, the Chapel of St Catherine. It was actually destroyed in 1537 during the dissolution of monasteries, so there's nothing left apart from a mound and some foundations. Let's go and have a look inside nonetheless. So this is the centre of the clump and yeah, sure enough there is a, a distinctive mound in the centre uh, with the odd bit of um, evidence of rubble and uh, stonework so I'm guessing this is where the chapel was and it would have been in a very high position because obviously the trees wouldn't have been here when it was built. But I think the hill's well over 300 foot high. Well just to the north of the clump of trees is a Miz maze and it's one of only eight remaining such mazes in England and really is quite fascinating. Well these mazes, or labyrinth as they're more correctly known, are created by cutting grooves in the turf to leave a continuous path of grass. And although medieval in design, this one is originally cut between 1647 and 1710 and then it was recut to a different pattern between 1830 and 1840. There are a few theories as to why they were made possibly uh, used as a punishment in medieval times where sinners were made to trace the path on their hands and knees or it may have been a way to confound the devil who can only travel in straight lines but if this was made in the 17th century then it would have been for recreational purposes only but this one is a little unusual and that it's uh, rectangular rather than circular and is 624 metres long apparently and formed from nine nested squares. Now local tradition actually links it with Winchester College and one summer a boy who had been banished to the hill for bad behaviour and with nothing else to do drew on his knowledge of classical maze design <laughs> and measured it out himself. just come onto the eastern side of the, the hill. That's the clump over there. I mentioned the chapel there, St Catherine. Well, she was the, uh, often used as the patron saint of a, a number of hilltops, I think having supposedly ascended to heaven from Mount Sinai. Well, there's another theory that the circular form of the hill fort uh, might have had something to do with the naming, St Catherine having been martyred upon a wheel. And I was reading somewhere that Winchester College football, which was a game a bit like rugby known as Winkies, <laughs> was played up here on the, the turf in the 17th century before moving to its modern form of 
pitches around the school below in the valley in 1868. Anyway, from the uh, eastern side, you get some great views over on the other side of the valley on Twyford Down. Nice to see the sun starting to come out now. Of course, there was a lot of controversy when a deep cutting was made on the other side of the down to build the M3, which was um, opened in the 1990s. Because when it did open, it meant the old Winchester bypass that went uh, at the foot of uh, St Catherine's Hill on the uh, western side could be closed and put back to grass. We'll see that very shortly. But yeah, I can just about make, yes, yeah, so there's the M3 looking quite busy this morning in the distance there. Okay, well, we're going to carry on with our walk along the rampart. You can see, you can easily make it out, and indeed the, uh, the ditch and the, the second little bank down there below. Now on the southern side of the hill, just about to start our descent, and I'm delighted to see that there are some steps here which will uh, keep my knees happy. <laughs> but there's some great views from up here, and indeed, just looking down into the, the valley below there, and that's where there were some plague pits in years gone by. Now I've seen some articles suggesting that uh, they were dug during the Great Plague of 1665-1666, but others indicate as far back as the Black Death of the, the mid-1300s, which is probably the more likely. And there's panning round. Just looking down below, this is a good point actually to point out a few things, um, apart from the fact that there are the 333 steps <laughs> to navigate going downhill. But from here, um, you can see where the old bypass used to be. The, the itching navigation, can't quite see it, uh, by that board down there, that's where the old railway line used to go. And then just in front of it, this is where the, uh, the bypass, or the, the first bypass that was built in the, the 1930s used to go. Of course, all long gone once the M3, which we can see in the top there, was built. Also, just from here, there's quite a good view of the viaduct, which we're eventually going to uh, to have a look at. Well, it was a lot easier coming down than it was going up. So, now we're at the bottom. I'll tell you a little bit about the Itchin navigation, which is just here on my uh, left. I say we will see the start of this right at the end of our walk but it's a disused canal system that ran between Winchester and Southampton. It opened in 1710 and closed in 1869 and it, it's called a navigation as it, it really is an improved river with the, the main river itching used for some sections with cuts and locks used to bypass the difficult sections but it could take barges up to four meters wide and 21 meters long but the traffic was only modest and, uh, well, the canal was decimated when the railways came. And this is St Catherine's Lock, or what used to be a lock, <laughs> on the, the navigation. It's a bit dark in here, hopefully you can see, but, um, I mean, those are sluice gates there, which is where the old lock gates used to be. Just. Uh, now there is a little information board here. There was a, a sawmill here once. But, uh, and there is a, I hope you can hear me with the water rushing through. And this gives you an indication as to what it looked like. Although I was reading somewhere on the internet that uh, it might not be quite as accurate as it should be. 
So obviously those are the lock gates. Um, there's the water wheel. So the water wheel would have been located down there. We're now continuing to head southwards. I've got the itching navigation on the right. And this is a, a sort of path and track. It's actually part of the National Cycle Network uh, Route 23, I think, which is that 86 mile long route from Reading to Southampton. And uh, so just on the left here, the, the embankment, that's where the old railway used to go. And then the main or the, the, the old road on the far side. It's quite sad. I've just seen a, a memorial to a, a young 19 year old who died in the 1970s, presumably when the road was here. Oh, that's a nice touch with a bench there with uh, the outline of a steam train on it reminding us of days gone by and indeed we're just about to go underneath a, a bridge that took the old railway line. Well now I've gone underneath that uh, bridge I've got the railway line on my right. <laughs> it had a fascinating history it was the uh, Didcot Newbury to uh, Winchester line and it was opened in two stages the Didcot to Newbury bit was opened in 1882 and then uh, the bit onto Winchester in 1885 and originally it was a cross-country railway and they hoped to complete the line all the way through to Southampton <laughs> but they ran out of money and in 1891 they joined up with the uh, London and South Western Railway Company uh, and built a, a little bit of extra track from Winchester through to Shawford Junction and then the line was able to uh, join up with the London and South Western Railway all the way through to Southampton. Well now this is the spot on the walk where we're going to start heading westwards towards uh, Winchester but before we do we're going to do a little detour to have a look at the Hockley Viaduct. Well this is the Hockley Viaduct and I apologise for the road noise because the M3 is literally just yards away. Now, I was telling you a bit about the, uh, the Didcot, Newbury and Winchester railway line. It wasn't straightforward at all. The Great Western Railway actually provided all the engines uh, between Didcot and Winchester. But at Winchester, they had to change the engines to those provided by the London and South Western Railway because that particular did company didn't want uh, Great Western trains running on their track. So there we go. So the extra bit of uh, track that went from uh, Winchester through to Southampton uh, had to cross over the River Itchen and that's why this uh, magnificent viaduct was built. So just over to my left here we can see the glorious River Itchen, one of my favourite rivers. Its source is all back at uh, just uh, south of Cheriton. We've actually been to the source when we did our uh, walk at Cheriton. And then of course it flows all the way down to uh, Southampton and into the sea. Okay, well, see if we can ignore the road noise and uh, have a little wander across the viaduct itself. The viaduct was uh, originally called the Shawford Viaduct and it opened in 1891. It's got 33 arches and spans a total of 614 metres. And although it looks like a brick structure, it has in fact solid concrete in its pillars. And the bricks are simply performing a very much a, an aesthetic function. And uh, oh, it looks like we've got some sort of old signal up here. I think it's... Uh, a memorial actually. Ah oh, yes, here we are. There's a little plaque alongside dedicated to the railwayman who oversaw the passage over the viaduct of 16,000 trains that uh, ran in the 12 months leading up to D-Day. Right, let's recross the viaduct, get away from this uh, noisy road and carry on with our walk. I'm now back on to the original route, heading westwards back towards Winchester. 
and the sun really is out now which is great to see and uh, the odd little view from time to time of the, the viaduct on my left and I'm following a track and it's hard to believe that this was once a very busy road before the M3 was built and the old uh, bypass was closed. Wow, we're about to cross the River Itchen. Isn't that a beautiful scene? And there's the old mill behind those trees there. Uh, I keep going on about these Hampshire chalk streams, so clear. Really are quite stunning. And uh, with the sun now glinting off the water makes it look even better, I think. And uh, I think there are, I spotted some swans over on this side. Yes, yeah, just underneath the, uh, the trees over there. And this is uh, looking across water meadows on the other side. Isn't that lovely? Well, this is an important part of the walk if you're going to be doing this yourself. I know a few people do these walks after looking at the video. Uh, just as we passed over the River Itchen along that old road, look out for a sign for the uh, Hospital of St Cross, which heads northwards and take that. And that's going to take us through some delightful water meadows and alongside of the River Itchen itself. Well, this is the Hospital St Cross and there were some medieval almshouses founded here between 1132 and 1136 and it's one of the oldest surviving charitable institutions in the UK, if not the oldest. And it still provides accommodation for 25 folk today known as Brothers. I think many of the buildings that are here actually date from the mid 15th century with additions in the 16th and 17th centuries and you can actually uh, visit it uh, that I saw a sign on the other side that said uh, when the opening times were but right next to it is this 12th and 13th century church <laughs> it looks more like a mini cathedral than a, a typical almshouse chapel and the buildings in a transitional Norman Gothic style North and South Chapels, a central tower, North and South Aisles, a North Porch and a Vestry. And the chancel was the first part, uh, Norman, and two aisles started to be built in 1135, and the rest was progressively built over many years, but not too much has changed since the 15th century. It really is quite magnificent. And of course we could see it right at the beginning of our walk when we were on the top of St Catherine's Hill looking down into Winchester. Just over here, Winchester College Cricket Ground. Although it looks as though they're, they're in the process of digging it up. Known as New Field I believe. And cricket's been played at uh, Winchester College ooh, certainly since the 17th century and at this ground since 1869. And indeed Winchester College has been around for over 600 years in the present location. I think it was actually founded in 1382. Well there are plenty of opportunities for dog dips around here. <laughs> I think it's just about hot enough day for you to enjoy it now. Is it too deep for you? <laughs> He doesn't like, it'll only go up to a certain height and then... <laughs> we did uh, try a little bit earlier on and it was a bit too deep for him. Well this really is a, a particularly pretty part of the, the itching. A nice steady flow. As I said before, crystal clear, sunlight bathing on top, so so peaceful. Gosh isn't that pretty with the uh, wisteria outside, and some hydrangeas there, 
What a lovely setting with the uh, little river in front and the bridge. Beautiful. Well, this bridge that we've just come over is called Black Bridge, and it's actually the start of the Itchin navigation. It's a single arch bridge built in 1796. It replaced a previous bridge built in 1670, which in turn replaced a wooden one. So, there we go. This is technically the start of the navigation. Now, there was a wharf. I'm not sure whether it was on this side of the, the bridge. Oh, look at those lovely young swans there. Or, we just go over onto the other side. I'm not sure if it might have been on that side. Looks more likely looking at the bank there. Well, we're very much on the homeward leg now. We're going to cross the navigation again. This is called Wharf Bridge, which was built in the, the 1760s. That's uh, looking on that side. And then <laughs> it's quite a cobbly, cobbly surface as we go through here. Well, the sun really is out now. And on this side, on the other side, and that's the, the boathouse uh, of Winchester College. And that was built in the 1930s. Well, this little stretch of the walk really is gorgeous. Just past a sign that tells us we're on the Itchen Way. Now the navigation here, just by me, is quite well maintained, in fact, uh, it's dredged to make sure it's at least, I think, four foot deep, presumably for the, uh, for the rowers. And just on the other side there, where that um, bit of concrete each, there used to be a bridge here that was built in the, uh, the 1920s, I believe, but it was taken down in uh, the 1970s because it was considered uh, too unsafe. It was a, a wooden bridge. Well, we're nearly at the end of the walk. I can just about see Tun Bridge in the far distance and clearly this is very much a, a canal dead straight but what a beautiful place to be on a, a summer's day just uh, watching the odd duck float by You'd spend hours here couldn't you is Tun Bridge. A car park is just behind there. Just in front of me here, a little sculpture reminding us that this was once a, a navigation and a canal. Coal, comb, corn, iron, stone and timber. Obviously uh, what was carried on there. In fact there was a similar uh, sculpture to this at uh, Shawford when we did our video walk there on the Itchin. And uh, what does that say? Northam, which is near Southampton to Winchester. <laughs> well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already done so, please do um, check out AR Facebook page uh, and uh, give that a like. And also, if you haven't already subscribed, um, please think about doing that and hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We've had a really super and interesting walk today, seen a little bit of everything. The sun did come out on occasions, but say the temperature was fine and it really was a quite delightful walk. We're now going to uh, see if we can uh, get a cup of tea at the cafe back at the car park. So until we meet again, Thanks for watching and cheerio. <laughs> well folks, here we are back at the Handlebar Cafe. 
for a breakfast roll and a cup of tea. And don't worry, I'll make sure he gets some. Right. A bit of bacon. <laughs>